Hello, I'm Nicola from Stitches and Snapdashery, and today I'm going to show you how to make a little yarn bowl, basket, hanging storage pod, whatever you want to put in it pod. It's totally up to you. I designed this recently. I am currently sewing for craft market this summer. I still have no idea if I'm going to get into the one I want to get into, but I'm building up an inventory, so I'm going to be ready when the time comes. So my thought was that it would be fun to make a little container out of upcycled denim and quilt cotton. Because the denim has a fair amount of stiffness, you don't need any interfacing. If you like things to be slightly sturdier and or, or squishier, you could use an interfacing or a fusible fleece in there. You could put it either on the back of the denim or on the back of the cotton. You could use upholstery fabric or any fabric of your choice, really. All I would say is, is if it's really thin, like a quilt cotton, pop an interfacing on it, at least a medium weight, either a, a fusible woven like Pellon SF101 or or even a non-woven fusible, which are considerably cheaper. If you're going to your local fabric store, you will notice that the non-wovens are far cheaper. And in fact, they do have a little bit of an advantage over a woven because they will not shrink. Sometimes what people have found is that they are using a steam iron on the SF-101 or onto unwashed, unpre-washed fabric, and one or other of them will shrink, and you get wrinkling. You shouldn't get that with a non-woven. So I often use a non-woven just because it's less expensive. I can stock up on a few meters at a time. But as I say, I haven't used any in this one. And even when I decided that after I had made the four inch size, which I thought would be a good size for a yarn cake, I made a five inch size, which is a little fluffier, but it also is a different kind of denim. And I made a six inch size. The bigger they go, the floppier they're going to get because the weight of them will pull them out of shape, which is not necessarily an issue. If you were to use this handy little grommet here on the side, as a hanging tool. You could put these on a pegboard or something like that. I have a pegboard back there. I made these storage pods a long, long time ago. It doesn't have to be sturdy and stand up on its own. It's just got to hold what you want to put in it. When I initially made my first prototype, I used quilt cotton for this tab here. And it was too flimsy. I like the fact that the denim stands up. And I also decided that the grommet should be facing this way. Originally, I had it facing this way. So once I had ironed out a few issues with this, it was really simple to make a bunch more of them because they're really, really easy and basic to make. And what I really like about these things is there's no sewing a cylinder into a circle, which is one of my most hated things to do. So even though this will hold a round yarn cake, the base is not actually round. But that's okay, because it's so much easier and quicker than faffing about with circles and cylinders. So my machine's all ready. I've set the stitch length for 2.6. I've got a Schmetz Microtex needle in there right now, which is an 80, 80, 12, which I have found is a good weight for sewing denim and quilt cotton. It's not super thick, but it just, it's just a little stronger than a 70. So that's what I'm using. And the Microtex are really sharp and they're good for sewing just about anything. I've got my little wonder clips ready in my little crochet pot. 
and I have cut my fabrics out. So I'll switch the camera down and you can see what I've got to get ready for this. And because I have designed three sizes of this, I will be putting the measurements in the description underneath the video. Today I am going to make a batch of four smallest ones, but there is a small, medium and large and the measurements for cutting are underneath the video, exact same method. I'm trying a different angle today. My last tutorial was for the fuzzy zipper pouch and I had the camera in a different place and it was a bit of a long shot. So I'm hoping that you can see things closer up. I made sure that my tripod is not touching my table, so we shouldn't have any shaking about today. I'm such a noob at this, honestly. Feel free to give me constructive feedback when you've watched this. So this basket is super simple. All you need is two pieces of denim or some other fairly heavy fabric, like an upholstery fabric or a fabric that you've interfaced to make it that sort of weight. And two pieces of lining. I'm using a quilt cotton. This has got a nice texture to it. It's not a sort of classic quilt cotton. It's almost rustic feeling. It is not a one-way print. If you have a one-way print, just make sure it runs from top to bottom because these are your bottom corners. You will also need a small piece of the heavier fabric for your grommet tab. This is one and three quarters by four. This tab is the same size for every basket. For the small basket, you're cutting eight and three quarters by six and three quarters. For the medium one, you're cutting 10 and three quarters by eight and a quarter. And for the large one, it's 12 and three quarters by nine and three quarters. And I know I don't expect you to remember that. That's why I'm going to put it underneath the video in the description box. You will also need a grommet. This is a grommet that's designed for lightweight fabrics. It doesn't have a particularly deep shank on it and the washer. And I learned by trial and error that the washer has a curved side that faces towards your grommet when you're hammering it in. <laughs> I have all the fabric and the materials cut out and ready for four of these today. But this is for one. Two outers, two inners, a tab, a grommet, and if you feel like using a label, you need to have that ready. I just need to iron that to my lining fabric shortly. For putting the grommet in, I have one of these really basic grommet tools. A lot of people have special presses for this. I do not do that much of this sort of thing. So I just got a hand tool. The grommet goes in here and you hammer the top of it. I'm going to do that shortly. So my first thing is going to be making the grommet tab. which is going to be super quick. You're just going to fold the grommet tab over so the short ends meet. And you're going to sew down each side and leave this, this end that's opposite the fold open because you need to turn it out afterwards. For the main part of the basket, I've allowed a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance because that's the width of my presser foot. But for this tab, I use a quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to sew down each side here. My iron is heating because what I'm going to do when I have turned this right side out is I'm going to press it nice and flat. Before I do that, I am going to just 
flip the corners flip the corners on the inside so they're not too bulky when I turn it out before I go to my iron I'm just going to do the same with my other three because as I said I'm making four of these at once I saved you the frustration of watching me turn this the right side out because it's kind of fiddly it's probably the fiddliest part of the whole process when I turned it right side out, I used the end of a paintbrush. You could use a chopstick or a point turner or whatever is handy to push your corners out and press it nice and flat. This denim does have a tendency to fray. Now it's time for the fun part. Or should I say the noisy part? I'm just going to take my machine table off so you can see what I'm doing. I like to use an old hobby mat. It's covered in bits of hot glue and stuff like that. It's certainly not my good cutting mat. I have a small hammer that I keep in my sewing room. You could just go and steal one from a toolbox if you have one handy in your house. Okay, so let's see. We have our grommets at the ready. Now, I didn't say at the beginning, but you don't have to use a grommet. What you could also do if you want to have this ability to hang it up or to run a th strand of yarn through it, you could use a loop of fabric or a loop of webbing. It does not have to be grommets. I know that sometimes I just don't want to be going and buying lots of specialty hardware for one single project. And so I would much rather use what I have in the stash or on hand hanging around sewing room. With the dark denim, I found that my trusty old silver marking pencil, which I've had for probably 30 years, is good for marking the denim. There are cutters that you can get. Again, if you want to make a lot of this sort of thing, then you can certainly get a cutter that you just hammer and it cuts the hole in the fabric nice and easy. I do have a four millimeter one of those somewhere. Can I find it? Nope. But these are 14 millimeters, so it wouldn't be much use anyway, except to maybe get the hole started. So I am holding a grommet over my fabric where I want my hole to be. I'm not even measuring, I'm just eyeballing it. So I'm ending up with a very, very light silver circle there. This is the absolute basic way of doing it. This is not the fancy way of doing it by any means. So what I do is I have my little scissors, which are very sharp on the tips. I cut a small hole in the middle of that silver circle. And then I cut around the line as close as I can. It's it's good to err on the side of a bit too small at first because if you go too big, the grommet won't hold in. Now, when I first made these, I was trying to cut through both layers of fabric at once, but now I do them separately because that way I don't hurt myself. So right now I have a hole through my fabric. What you need to do is you take your heavy base, the flat side goes on your on your mat. That goes there, your grommet goes upside down. On that base then you push your hole in your fabric around the grommet
Your washer goes on top of that. Curved side down. Try and keep the little frayed bits of fabric out of the way. It's not the end of the world, but it looks a little messy if, you, if they're sticking through later. Now this part, the circular part goes on top of that. You can feel it all nesting together beautifully. And then comes the fun part, which is going to be loud. you got to beat the heck out of it. There you go. Your grommets in. It's a good day when you can put in four grommets and you don't hammer your finger. While I had the iron hot, I took the chance to put my label on. I haven't stitched around them yet, but I have fused them on an inch and a quarter below the center top of my lining piece. And now I'm just going to take all of those labels and sew around them. I've sewn around all of my stitches and slapdashery labels and the next step is to baste my grommets on. Now in order for the grommet to end up facing the right way you need to baste it on so that the back of the grommet is facing the fabric. You can use a pin or you can use a mark with a pen or whatever works for you, or just make a little crease in the fabric there. Kind of hard to see on this denim, so I'm going to put a pin in it just to mark the center. And then I am going to place my grommet on top of my lining so that the raw edges match up and the grommet tab is in the center. And I'm going to lengthen my stitch to three. Not crucial, you don't have to do that, but just going to put a few stitches across there to hold it in place so that it doesn't shift when I sew my layers together. And I'm going to make sure that that seam ends up within my three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So don't make it more than say a quarter of an inch away from the edge of your fabric. So there it is, basted on so that it's held there for later. So I'm just going to remember to turn my stitch length back to 2.6, because that's something I frequently forget to do. Next step, we're going to join the top of this grommet piece to the top of one of my linings. If you're using a label, I like to have the grommet and the label being the two pieces that are joined to each other. So I'm matching up the top of my lining with the top of my denim. I like to sew from the denim side. I am using a walking foot, which is an even feed foot. But if for any reason the top layer wants to go roughly, I would rather have the thinner fabric on the bottom to avoid that. So three eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to do it with those. And then I'm going to put the other two also face to face, right sides together. And sew those. And I will be back stitching at the beginning of end, and end of each seam. And I will be chain piecing, so I will go straight from sewing this bit to this bit, and then I'll go and do all of my others in one long line. It saves a lot of messing about and thread. If you like, you can slow down over the extra layers where the grommet tab is, and you can also backstitch over it so that it's got extra holding power later on. My seam is done along the top 
on both the grommet side and on the plain side. I'm now just going to take them over to the iron and press the seams open. Where the grommet is attached here, it's a little bit difficult to press it open, but as long as either side is pressed, I find that's adequate. It just makes it neater for when you sew the side seams. Here are my pieces pressed. Now all we need to do is flip one piece over the other, right sides together. We are going to carefully match up our side seams here. Denim to denim, lining to lining. Try and get it as accurate as you can because it will make it look better once you've sewn it all together and flipped it right side out. Same on this other side. Ideally, make it as accurate as possible. Clip or pin. I do love my wonder clips. Just going to put a couple of clips at my bottom edges here. So you'll see that when I started this and I showed you my cutout pieces, I had already cut out the two inch squares for this size of bag, slightly different for the other sizes. I'd already cut them out and it's important to do that. Cut it out before you sew any seams because you don't want to sew the seams and then measure from the seams or you'll have too much of a cutout. This works perfectly for the size. So if we cut it out ahead of time and it also makes, I think, the seaming easier when it comes time to box your bottoms. All right, so there it is all ready to go to the machine again. What I have found best for keeping things lined up here and here is to start sewing at the intersection of the pieces right here. So I'm going to start sewing here and sew this way and backstitch. Then I'll go back to this middle part and sew that way and backstitch. If I start sewing from one end and just sew across, then it's, it's harder to make sure this matches up perfectly. I'm also going to sew the bottom of the outer. And when it comes to this part here, I'm just going to sew a little bit at each end, enough so that it doesn't interfere with my seam allowance. So maybe an inch an inch here and an inch here and leave a gap for turning. So what I do sometimes is I'll take a friction pen because I love friction pens and they're great for marking fabric and iron them, ironing them back off again because they are heat erasable. It's a good idea not to put them on fabric where it's going to ultimately be on the outside because the color can come back with cold. For marking inside of a bag, it's perfect. Just double checking my, my seams match. Of course, that's still no guarantee that they will. There's a reason why this channel is called Stitches and Slapdashery. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to match my edges up there and I'm going to sew from that center section down to the edge of the denim and just back stitch a couple of stitches and then I am going to flip it and go from that center section again. It's actually quite a good idea to do that because it gives you a double layer of stitching at a stress point in your in your basket or bag. And across the bottom of the outer. And 
remember to leave that gap when you get to the bottom of the lining. There we are. Side seams are done, bottom seam is done, and I left a turning gap right here for birthing the basket later on. Now it's time to box the bottoms of your basket. All we need to do, put a finger in there to open it up and squash it flat. So right now it's flat this way. We're going to put a finger in here. We're going to pull the sides of the hole outwards and have our two seams meet in the middle. Like this. And it's a good idea to flatten them before you sew it. Have your seam allowances open. You can press it. In fact, it certainly doesn't hurt to press your seam allowances open at this junction between the two fabrics because when you turn it inside out, you want that to sit nice and flat. So before I sew my boxy bottoms, I am going to go and press my seam allowances. We're going to box all of these the same way. Squish your corner, make sure your seams match. Have your seam allowances open for the least amount of bulk and try and make sure that your seams do match up as far as possible on the right side. I just put one clip in to hold my seams lined up. You can put more if you want. And now we're just going to go back to the machine and do a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So across each corner. There they are, all sewn. And we are nearly there. And now we're ready to go to the exciting part. Because we're going to turn it right side out. This never gets old. Just going to reach inside that turning gap that we left in our lining. And pull it through carefully. You don't want to rip your seam that you made in that lining earlier. the corners out. Check to see how well we did on matching our seams up on the sides. Not bad, Nicola, not bad. Looks good. So before I sew up my gap in my lining, I'm going to do my top stitching. I like to leave the gap till the very end because what I like to do when I'm folding my bag so that my lining is on the inside is I like to have access to the inside here where my seam allowances are so that if necessary, I can go in and just make sure that they're open and then turn them down on each other for minimum bulk at that seam. So I'm going to push the lining in on all of my four bags that I'm making. I'm going to press the edge so that the lining is rolled inside the bag neatly. 
make sure it's all looking good and then I'll top stitch my little baskets are so close to being done I've pressed them around the top edge so that it's in place for me to top stitch. Plenty of steam is a good idea to tame it into submission. Just don't burn yourself like I do. And also if you're putting your iron over your grommet, remember it will be hot, so don't touch it straight after. If you have a machine that's in, embedded into a tabletop, then obviously you won't be able to put these over the arm of your machine. So you can either top stitch them from the inside or you can flip them right side inside out and top stitch them that way. But I like to just whip this table out of the way and put them over the bed of my machine like this. What I will do is I'll add a couple of clips, but I don't like to go overboard on clips when I'm using the free arm of my machine because they tend to get hung up underneath. And sometimes that means that they'll mess up your stitching because stuff will get caught. So when I'm doing my top stitching, I like to start at a side seam. If I start and finish right back here, this is the most visible part of my bag or basket. So I don't want to start here. So I start at a side seam and the distance from the edge is a personal choice. What I often do is I'll pop it over the arm of my machine and line up my presser foot, the right of my presser foot with the edge of the fabric, and then I'll scooch my needle over. I realize a lot of people can't do that because like with my old mechanical machine, which is also a Janome, I can't move the needle left or right to sew a straight stitch with it. But on this one, I can. So I'm going to lengthen my stitch to three and a half because a long stitch for top stitching is nice. And I'm going to move my needle over probably to six and a half. The center is three and a half. So six and a half is a good distance from the edge for me. Top stitching is done. There's a tiny bit of a glitch where I didn't get it lined up perfectly and I redid it. Hopefully, I'll do a better job on the rest of them. I do slow down a little bit over the seam, bulky seam parts, and also where the grommet is. Because what can happen if you don't is that you end up getting uneven stitching if it hangs up a little bit. Now all that's left is to pull this lining back out of the bag. This is where ironing the seam allowances pays off because the edges will or should fall into place more neatly. So there's my gap there. Because I pre-ironed it, the edges are coming together beautifully. You can pin or clip. I'm just going to throw it under the machine here. But first I am going to go back to my center needle 2.6 length. and so as close to the edge as possible while catching both folded edges. So 
there we are. It's just a teeny tiny seam there. And I can push that back inside. And that's the first one finished. I think they're really cute. Here's one of my cakes of yarn that I made on my ball winder. You could fit quite a large cake in there. And then you can feed from the center of your cake. If you like, you can always thread it through the grommet for feeding. But I don't think that's necessary. Might just be fun to pop a carabiner on there or something like that. Or just, as I say, hang it on the wall. Don't have to keep yarn in it. And there we go. All finished. That's really pretty fabric. I think that used up all of that fabric that I have now. So there won't be any more of those in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope I got the camera angle better this time. And I hope I didn't leave any crucial information out. If I did leave anything unclear, do leave a comment and I will attempt to clarify. But it's a really, really simple design. And when you make the three different sizes, they nest into each other really nicely. This is the four inch, there's a five inch and a six inch. So it would be fun to make a set. Or you could just make a group of all the same size and hang them up on your pegboard in your sewing room or in your kitchen. So thanks very much for watching. And I hope to see you again soon.